So, can you study biology by yourself? So of course my answer is going to be yes you can, but if you are going to do that, what are the things that you need to do and what resources do you need to have available? Let's talk about that. First thing you need is the specification. Whatever exam board that you are studying for, you need to get that specification so that you know what are the things that you need to know, what, what's the extent to which you need to know them, so that first thing, you don't miss anything out while you're self-studying, you don't miss anything important out, and secondly, you don't waste any valuable time studying things that you don't need to know. So to make the most effective use of your time and resources, you need to begin by using the right specification. Secondly, your textbook and how to use it. So most textbooks will be fine as long as they're exam board endorsed. What I would say the key things to remember about the textbook that you use is make sure that first it's a textbook if you're self-studying, you might hear um, a lot of people using um, revision guides and maybe it looks a bit more appealing and a little bit more accessible because um, maybe they're thinner, maybe they look a bit less intimidating. But the textbooks, what they do is they help you to understand things step by step. That's why they take a little bit more space up in terms of words and page because they're trying to guide you through understanding and building on what you presumably know from before. Whereas revision guides are a bit thinner, less scary, um, but uh, they are not taking the time and words uh, and giving you examples in order to help you to understand. And the first thing about self-studying or learning by yourself is to understand what your challenge is and learning primarily is about understanding, not about knowing the content, not about remembering the content. It's about understanding the content. That's what you're going to be examined on, remember, is primarily on your understanding, uh, less and less so on the content and memorizing it. So first make sure that it is a textbook, not a revision guide. That's my advice. Uh, take it or leave it. But um, once you've decided on a textbook, make sure that it's exam board endorsed. Make sure you've had a look and you're happy. You, you, you won't love your textbook. No one ever does. Um, but uh, it's got to be exam board endorsed and you've got to be able to work with it. So let's move on to what you do with your textbook. Okay. So once you have your textbook, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you're understanding the content that's in the textbook. My advice always is to make notes and that's how you do it. So um, you might have a different way, but for me, biology, ultimately you're going to be writing an exam. So however, um, you can't really get away from writing stuff down on paper. And the more you do of that building up to your exam, the less that particular thing will be an obstacle for you. Okay, so we're making notes using our textbook, and but the purpose of that is not to condense the information primarily. The purpose of um, making notes with using the textbook is to make sure that we are understanding everything that's in the textbook. We are digesting the main concepts. We're internalizing them in terms of making that fit with our own understanding of what we've done in the past. So that might be our GCSE knowledge. So the textbook should introduce new concepts to us and we should be sticking them on to our previous learning um, nice and neatly. Okay. Um, and that's going to lead into the next point. So first thing about the textbook is we're making notes using the textbook, but we should not be copying the textbook out. Now that's probably like a video of its own, but the main point is you should be summarizing chunks of information, not copying down sentences. So just make sure that you, you, you can identify when you're just copying down too much information as opposed to reading a paragraph, understanding that concept and then rewriting that in your own words. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, you want to be condensing that as you go along, uh, but that's going to be a natural pro process because you're going to be selecting what information is important. It's important to do this as an active process, okay? And here is where your um, specification is going to come in again, because you're going to use your specification to make sure that 
you are always looking for particular things in your textbook. Um, be aware of just going through the pages of the textbook because they come one after another. Rather, uh, look at the specification, know what it is you are trying to understand, know which questions you are trying to answer, and then go to your textbook with with that particular goal, with that particular purpose in mind. And that will make sure that when you're reading, you're reading a bit more actively because you are looking for something in particular rather than simply um, passively looking at the words and absorbing whatever you can. Okay, so use your specification to guide your reading and when, when you see information that addresses that particular specification point, that's when you know that you've hit important information and that's going to be important uh, to uh, record in your notes. Okay, the other important thing about the note making process is to constantly be comparing um, what you are being newly introduced to to what you know uh, from your past uh, study. So if you've done GCSE or whatever other level of study before your A-levels, you need to constantly be making sure that the information that you are encountering new, it sits neatly and nicely and fits with what you know in the past. And when those two things don't match up, that's when you have a, an, a, you know, a really valuable learning experience potentially about to happen because and it doesn't feel like that it feels like confusion it feels like frustration but what you've encountered is uh, an opportunity to set something right so maybe you've misunderstood the new information that you've just learned or maybe there's a misconception that you've had from your previous study that you need to fix either way um, you need some help or further research to help you through this point but that is a very important part of using your textbook effectively. It's identifying the things that don't make sense in your textbook or don't make sense from your previous learning and then using the internet or using a friend or getting in touch with a teacher if possible to help you through that. And if you're not able to do that at that time, please don't ignore it. Please come back to it at some later point in time, but don't just leave it. Um, it's not going to go away. Okay, and if you don't address it, it's just going to lead to further problems uh, and confusion as you, as you add more knowledge to, on, on top of what you've just learned. Okay, so make sure that you're using the textbook to read actively and anything you don't understand, you're trying to address it by using other resources on the internet, other textbooks perhaps, asking friends or getting in touch with um, experts in the subject if you can. Okay, um, so that is basically the note making process. Now, once you've got your notes, the next stage is going to be to, to kind of assess whether you've understood it or not. Because it's, it is really easy to think that you've understood it, but real learning happens when you actually assess what you have learned and you it, essentially you prove to yourself whether you've learned something or not. So that's going to happen by self-assessment. So here, my advice is you find good sets of exam questions. Um, ideally, they are past questions that were actually a part of exam papers in the past. These are widely and freely available, so make sure you're not spending, um, uh, you know, you're not paying for the privilege of this because they're available on the exam board's website. They, they are also available freely on other websites as well. But, you, and, and where possible, maybe try and get them broken down into topics so that you can, once you've come to the end of a particular topic or unit of study, then you can attempt the questions on there. Using the questions effectively then involves you making sure that you self-assess and you self-assess honestly. Um, so you're gonna be looking at the mark scheme and you're going to be assessing whether your answers were correct or not correct or whether they could have been better or, or improved or which points you missed and didn't include. That's going to be really, really important. And the more strictly you do this and the better you try to understand the mark scheme and, and, the, and the more you're able to identify your mistakes, the, the more opportunity you're giving yourself to improve. Okay, so make sure that you self-assess using past questions. Make sure you 
mark your work and make sure that any um, uh, mismatches between your answer and the mark scheme are effectively addressed. That means going back to your notes, perhaps maybe adding information that you didn't think to include the first time, maybe uh, changing certain conceptual uh, ideas that you had in your head, maybe the wrong way around, uh, addressing those, fixing them, and then moving on from that point. Okay, so it's important that you follow up your note making with assessment. The final thing is going to be commitment to memory, or otherwise known as revision. So uh, revision is the last on my list because um, you might only need to do a lot of this or intensely when it comes to the date of your, or, or nearer the date of your exam, or maybe only do it periodically um, up until that point. So revising, you know, the key part of revising is recreating the knowledge from scratch. Okay, revision should not be you looking at your notes and telling yourself that you know this. It should not be you looking at revision guides and just um, self-assessing whether it, that looks familiar or not. Real revision uh, is proving. Again, we come back to that word of proving. So, uh, real revision is you proving that you know something. Okay, so what I advise here is that you take your notes, hopefully they've been kind of broken down into chunks, right? So you got within a topic, you might have, um, you know, specific bits that make up the topic. Uh, chunks, reasonably sized chunks, I would say, going from the size of a flashcard, maybe five or six points, all the way to something about 15 points, whatever you find is digestible for you, okay? So you're gonna break your topic down into these chunks, and then, you're going to recreate all the information in those chunks from scratch. And if you can't do that, you're gonna go back to your content, you're gonna go back to your notes, you look over your notes, remind yourself of what you didn't um, remember the first time around, and then you're not gonna continue, you are going to scrunch that paper up, chuck it in the bin, and you're gonna start again from scratch until you're gonna repeat that process until you can do the whole thing from beginning to end for that particular topic and then move on to the next topic, okay? So that's what revision means. Revision means proving that you know certain content, okay? It doesn't mean just looking at content and telling yourself that you know it, right? So that is revision and um, again, you need to do that more intensely, closer to the exam, but you might just want to periodically come back to certain content. If it's not exam time, you might just want to come back to it maybe on a weekly basis or a bi you know, two-weekly basis, if that's up to you. But there you have it, guys. That's, those are the, the main things that I think constitutes um, being able to learn by yourself. Obviously, you, know, you need to be motivated to do this stuff, and this stuff is not pleasant. A lot of it uh, takes a lot of hard work, but at least here is a process that uh, you can trust. You can modify it to suit you, um, but these are the key elements that I think go into learning by yourself. If you feel that maybe you've got some catching up to do, or maybe you want to take advantage of these um, holidays or breaks where you're not in uh, college or school, you can learn by yourself. If you have any questions on what I've said here, or if there's any part of what I've discussed here that you want me to go a bit more in depth into and explain further, I'll be more than happy to do that. This was just a kind of an overview of what I think is the, you know, are the, are the key elements of doing these things by yourself, because that a lot of this stuff is left up to you to discover by yourself. And um, I think sometimes maybe there's not enough information and sometimes there's too many different ideas. Uh, and it's important to know what are the key things that you're trying to achieve. It's up to you how you do some of these things, but it's important to know what those key things are. Um, before you start um, doing them. So I hope you found this helpful. Remember any questions, do let me know in, in the comments. Um, uh, thanks for watching. Oh, thanks for watching, yuck. Um, right. Good luck, guys, in your journey.